Whoa, it's so hard to do few. Oh, hey there. So, as we can feel and experience right now, we are in the middle of a climate change. The climate change will cause the temperature to rise really high from normal in some countries and also really low, causing uncomfortableness to animals, humans and also crops and plants. The main problem of a climate change is caused by pollution. There are many types of pollution nowadays due to the modernization. So in this video, we will discuss four types of pollution which is air, water, soil and thermal. Stay tuned! So the first type of pollution that we will be discussing in this video is air pollution. Air pollution usually comes from energy use and also production. The burning of fossil fuel releases hazardous gases and chemicals into the air. And these gases contribute to climate change. The carbon dioxide and smog that was produced can cause the rise in temperature of the earth. And the formation of smog during warm weather can cause the increase in ultraviolet radiation. There are a few examples of sources that leads to air pollution. So let's go through one by one. The first source of air pollution is smog and also soot. The emission of combusting fossil fuels in cars, incinerators, and factories will react with sunlight. Therefore, the gas that was released from the reaction can cause pollution to air. Soots are made up of tiny particles that are carried in air and causes allergic reaction and worsen asthma patients. The next source that contributes to air pollution is hazardous air pollutants. Hazardous air pollutants mean the emission of mercury, lead, dioxide and also benzene which are all carcinogenic and can cause cancer in humans. Dioxin can affect the liver of a human and also the immune body so it is very dangerous if inhaled. Last but not least, agricultural is also one of the major contributors to air pollution. The agricultural air pollution mainly comes in the form of ammonia. It comes from a heavily fertilized field and also livestock waste. It will then combine with pollutants from combustion and seeps into the air and cause pollution. It will be harmful towards animals, human and also plant. Okay now, let me tell you on ways to help in preventing air pollution. Firstly, we can carpool or use public transportation or maybe even walk or cycle to the destination we want to go so that we won't have to release carbon fuels from the exhaust from the car. Next, we have to avoid burning leaves waste from our home so that it will not contribute to air pollution as the smoke that will form from the combustion is very heavy. So we have come down to the next pollution which is the soil pollution. Soil pollution can be defined as the presence of toxic chemicals such as pollutants or contaminants in soil with high enough concentration to pose as a risk to human health and the ecosystem. There are numerous causes of soil pollution that occurs every day and for ease of reference, I'm going to split them into two categories which are the naturally occurring causes and the man-made causes. So we're going to jump into the first category which is the naturally occurring causes or you can also call it as the natural pollutants. Natural processes can lead to an accumulation of toxic chemicals in the soil. This type of pollution has only been recorded in a few cases such as the accumulation of higher level of chlorine in the soil which is an accumulation that is purely to the natural processes in every environment. The next category is the man-made pollution. This kind of pollution originates in several processes which is some deliberate and some accidental. I'm gonna give a few examples of man-made pollution. The first one is the accidental spills and leaks of chemicals such as gasoline and diesel at gas station during transportation or storage. The next example is the agricultural activities involving diffusion of herbicides, insecticides, pesticides, and fertilizers. Moving on is thermal pollution. Thermal pollution is basically the form of water pollution that refers to the degradation of water quality by any processes that changes the ambient water temperature. 
This condition chiefly arises from the waste heat generated by an industrial process such as certain power generation plants. The main cause of thermal pollution is the industry, to be precise, power plants that uses water as a coolant. In industry, after water are being used as a coolant, it is returned to the natural environment at a higher temperature. The changes of water temperature will decrease the amount of oxygen in the water and that will lead to thermal pollution. Thermal pollution can also be caused by deforestation. As the soil erosion increases, the amount of light absorbed to water increases. Lastly, thermal pollution can also be caused by the release of very cold water from the base of reservoir to warm waters. Thermal pollution gives negative effect by decreasing the dissolved oxygen level in warm water and it will soon endanger aquatic animals like fish. A large increase of temperature can lead to the denaturing of life-supporting enzymes by breaking down hydrogen and disulfide bonds within the quaternary structure of enzyme. While the release of unnaturally cold water from reservoir can change the fish and macro intervertebrate fauna of river and reduce the river productivity. Lastly, thermal pollution can increase the rate of photosynthesis and plant decay causing the bacteria to grow from the pile of dead plants and increase the need of oxygen due to the rise of metabolism and population. The impact of thermal pollution can be seen through the water heats, ice cap melt, and the rising of ocean level. Water pollution is water whose its composition has been changed to the extent that it is unusable. It usually occurs when harmful chemicals or harmful microorganisms decrease the water quality by contaminating the river or ocean. However, not all kinds of water pollution comes from the same source. Here is a quick list of different types of water pollution that currently compromise with the quality of H2O all over the globe. So as we all know, agriculture is the main source of the water pollution, especially for the groundwater. So when this groundwater gets polluted by the chemical contamination that comes from the pesticide and fungicide, it will seep deep into the ground and contaminate the riverbed. Thus, compromising the quality of wells and bowls which groundwater is extracted for human use. And this contamination also can be spread far from the original polluting source as it seeps into the stream, lakes and ocean. Unlike the others in the list, microbiological pollution is a naturally occurring form of water contamination. It happens due to bacteria, protozoa and viruses that can infiltrate the water supplies and cause the disease such as cholera. Humans are the most susceptible to this kind of water pollution uh, where the water treatment systems are not yet in place. Surface water quality can occur naturally, accidentally or intentionally which also can lead to poor water quality. It happens due to negligence in industry that emptying their waste into water bodies such as the oil spill at the ocean. Other than that are the suspended metals that improperly discard by the irresponsible user such as the fragment of plastic, rubber or any material. Those things will just simply float on its surface, but unfortunately, it will prevent the oxygen and sunlight from penetrating into the ocean. So, here's just some simple ways that you can do to prevent water contamination to occur or at least limit your contribution to it. Firstly, reduce the plastic consumption and then properly dispose chemical cleaners and oils and also uh, pick up the litter and throw it at the garbage can. I would like to share about Biosphere. Now, what is Biosphere? Biosphere is a global ecosystem that composed of living organisms and the abiotic factors which they derive energy and nutrients. It is very important for us to preserve and conserve the biosphere to provide clean and healthy environment, reduces the problems of environmental pollution, maintain stability and balance in nature, make sure that there is continuous supply of natural resources, to prevent the extinction of plant and animal species and preventing the loss of habitats of living organisms. Preservation and Conservation In order to preserve and conserve our planet, there are three things that I would like to share. The first one is 3R concept, which is reduce, reuse, and recycle. Cut down on what you throw away. Follow the 3Rs to conserve natural resources and landfill space. 
Secondly is to conserve water. Water is essential to life everywhere and we cannot risk it running out. Conserving water involves refraining from water pollution. This requires the use of strategies that include reducing wastage, prevent damaging water quality, and improve water management. Third is to plant a tree. As we all know, trees provide food and oxygen. They help us to save energy and clean the air, also help us to combat the climate change. Roles of microbiologists to save the planet. Have you ever heard about bioremediation? Bioremediation uses microorganisms to reduce pollution through the biological degradation of pollutants into non-toxic substances. This can involve either aerobic or anaerobic microorganisms that often use this breakdown as an energy source.